Good morning. It's wonderful to have you uh, today, the day of the Lord. We are excited that God has given us this opportunity to come before Him to worship Him as His people, His children. So, always an exciting time to see all of us gather together in His name. We continue with our study from the book of Acts. We'll be in Acts chapter 8. We'll do 25 verses this morning, and the Lord will bless us all. So before that, let us bow in prayer. God, we thank you for the privilege to publicly read your word, the privilege we have as your people to receive from you this morning. We ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us in your very special way. We know that we all need you this morning. We have different issues with us. We have a lot of baggages with us, but we know that there is freedom in you and through your word. So we ask that this morning that you would speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. We concluded last week with the story of Stephen who just died for faith, died for preaching the gospel, dying to defend what he's received from the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave a very powerful message. The Bible told us that even the, his listeners, was, they were wondering of this kind of wisdom. You know, they've never heard it from anyone else. It is the same scripture that they've interacted with before. They have read the prophecies of the Messiah, they know the story of Moses and Abraham and all these people. But then uh, Stephen told them that they are stiff-necked and they are uncircumcised in their hearts and ears and they've always resisted the Holy Spirit. It was, it, this was not the beginning of their resistance. They've always done that. Their forefathers did that and they are continuing with the same. And the resistance did not end in that season in time. It is also here with us that people still, you teach them or you preach the word of God, there's always resistance from people. And this man, um, as he was in the chambers with this man, he said that I see heavens open. I see Jesus Christ standing at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He's with this very educated and very powerful man, and they can't even see beyond their noses. While Stephen is down here looking up, he could see above the ceiling what they're not able to see. And what he saw was the Son of Man standing before the throne of God. And this by indication would tell us that this man, at whatever cost, he was ready to go to be with the Father. Knowing the heart of this man, when they were stoning him, he said, into your hands I place my spirit. Do not count this evil for this man. But there was also a man. The Bible told us, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. That was dropped there, and we shall inter interact with this man again as we continue. The Bible says here in chapter 8 that now Saul consenting to his death, thinking about the death of this man, 
And at that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles who remained in Jerusalem. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, you remember the Saul that we just read here, Saul of Tarsus, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the gospel. It is amazing that the promise was given by our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, go into the whole world, preach the gospel. So when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. And I don't know that they were starting to be comfortable a little bit in Jerusalem because the Lord is working. The Lord is doing marvelous things in their eyes, and it is amazing to behold the, the things that the, that the Lord is doing. I don't know their plan in terms of going and spreading the gospel in Judea and Samaria and to the other parts of the world. I don't know what their plan was, but we see the genesis of that plan. It is being fulfilled when the church is in trouble. You would think because now they have, you know, a little bit of good time in Jerusalem, they can plan and say, hey, now that we have appointed deacons to take care of these issues, maybe um, two apostles with other people, with other deacons would go to Judea, others would go to Samaria, others would disperse themselves to the world so that the gospel would go. But we don't see it. What we see is a time of trouble. Great persecution arose against the church that was at Jerusalem. And this caused the people to be dispersed. And where were they dispersed? To the regions of Judea and Samaria. Just exactly what our Lord Jesus Christ had told them. So you'll be my witnesses here in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, people are aware. Now you guys, it's time to move. But maybe they were waiting for the timing bell to know when they're supposed to move. And this timing bell was the persecution of the church. When this happened, they were dispersed and they moved. This man called, caused a lot of havoc. The Bible says here in verses, For therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the gospel. It might seem that it was unfortunate that they were in trouble. But fortunately, that they were scattered for the good of the growth of the church of Jesus Christ. I mean, we, we never invite trouble. We don't like trouble. But sometimes it comes for the good. So that many, many other people would receive what we have received. Then the Bible also introduced Philip now to us. Formerly it was Stephen who did great things and wonders and they just murdered him. And now we have Philip. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitude with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. And these things were the unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed. And many who were paralyzed and lame were healed, and there was great joy in the city. 
This is the city of Samaria. We know from history, and as our Lord even went there, in Samaria found a woman at the well. He was at the well waiting there. And this, he asked for water. This woman said, hey, I, we have nothing to do with you people. You the Jewish people, nothing. We don't have fellowship together. There's nothing in common. Because the Jewish people call them the half-castes. Half from the Assyrians and the Jewish people mingled together. They intermarried. And now they're Samaritans. And the Jewish people never, they never liked each other. And this is where Philip went. When Jesus was there, spoken to this woman who said that she had no husband, Jesus told her that you've rightly said so. For even the one that you have right now is not yours. And she went back to the city and said, hey, come and see a man who knows everything about me. Come and see this man. And that is actually always the point of the gospel. Come and see this man. The man Jesus Christ. If our invitation will never take people to Jesus Christ and take people to ourselves, we are preaching another gospel. Not the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's going to a place where there's a lot of controversy and he's preaching the gospel and a lot of things are happening. When Jesus was there, we are not told of a lot of these records of healing and people walking and, you know, in Samaria, we're not told about many of them, but now we have them because we have people who have heeded the gospel because Jesus said before that many of these things you will do in my name. People will be healed. People will receive the Messiah. But we are glad that this man was chosen amongst the deacons. Remember, he's a deacon. But miracles are wrought through him. And the Bible says here, and there was great joy in the city. Whenever Christ is preached in truth, there is always joy in that place. Everywhere Christ is preached, whether it's in our homes, in our offices, in our schools, whatever place he's preached in truth, in turn there is joy, overwhelming joy. Why? Because people are always depressed <laughs> with issues and baggages and a lot of things, and we can only receive joy from him. There was great joy in this town. In this city. But there was a certain man called Simon. <laughs> there was a certain man called Simon, the cameraman. There was a man called Simon who was a sorcerer. You know, when, when the gospel is preached in our homes, Everywhere we go, there will always be a man. There will always be a woman. Either who, who will be always opposing what you're saying. I know if, for my fellow Kenyans, with our family meetings, <laughs> there's always an uncle who will cause trouble. There's always an auntie who will do something. In these negotiations, there's always an uncle. You know, the, the things that we, we, we tell people, like, hey, so have you talked to your uncles before we go to this negotiation? Have you talked to your aunties? Because there's one. It doesn't matter how long he'll be given a speech with the parents. Like, hey, so these people are coming. They've told us the way they are, so let's go slow on them, right? Yes, no problem. No problem. <laughs> You show up, my friend, you sweat. You sweat. 
If you're that auntie in this house, <laughs> if you're that uncle, you're here. May the Lord forgive you. <laughs> Don't cause people to stumble. I mean, have you realized that the people who want to do things right are the people who find a lot of obstacles? You want to put things plainly, hey, you want to honor the parents? What do you find in return? Our daughter has gone to school. I've gone to school too. Who's going to pay for me? <laughs> She's done this. Yes. No, she, she did break these glasses. How is that supposed to this meeting? This young man, when he was young, he, in fact, he didn't break a glass. He spoiled the TV. He was trying to fix it. Pulling the cables and the radios and everything. Who is going to pay for this? You know, these things here, it's crazy. For those who have not gone for this, <laughs> you guys have not experienced life, this other side. The Bible says here, there was a man, there was a certain man called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria claiming that he was someone great. That was his claim. <laughs> to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Wow. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with the sorceries for a long time. But when they believed, Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. Amazing. That a sorcerer just believed. And he's following Philip. We're going to see his intention, though. <laughs> he wants something. I mean, we, we, there's a time when we would hear the gospel, and it was always quoted with something else. It is not just the gospel. If you receive Jesus Christ, you know, it was, there was also salt, that comes with it. There is sugar that comes with the gospel. There is something else. So the expectation is you get born again and you're given this. You get born again and you're given this. So the gospel is with the silver platter, they come hand in hand. I don't know what this man would be expecting, but we'll be told as we continue. But I want us to remember that one thing. The Bible just told us that he believed and he was baptized. He believed because many people say, you know, how can this man ask for what he's asking? You know, giving money to receive this gift. And he's born again. He's a new believer who doesn't know things. Perhaps he's saying things. You remember Peter, the apostle? He always was the one saying things. <laughs> At times he would be told to shut up. He was the one who was always blabbing things like, hey, this is what they say. Jesus would say, get behind me, Satan. Remember. He was still a follower of Jesus Christ, even at that moment when he was told, get behind me, Satan, for you speak the things that are not of the kingdom. I mean, how many times have we spoken things that are very foolish in our Christian life? You're trying to be smart, <laughs> and in turn, you say dumb things. I've said dumb things many times in my life. 
And probably I will say them <laughs> because I'm just learning as we go. We know no better than them. This man, he followed Philip. And he was amazed seeing the miracles and the signs which were done. Now he's following Philip, but now he's amazed as a miracle because he was the miracle worker. Okay? He was the sorcerer. Now someone else has come. He's doing beyond what he's able to do. And maybe by him following, he's expectant that maybe he'll be doing the same. Maybe I'll be doing the same. Now when the apostles were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw when Simon saw that through the laying hand, the laying of hands, through the, the, this apostle, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God would be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray, pray to God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. That is what we're going to talk about the rest of our minutes. What the Apostle Peter saw in this man. Remember we just told in verses 13 that he believed and he was baptized. And then he followed Philip. And then the apostles were informed what is happening in Samaria. They came, prayed with the people, and there was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This was something that they would see. I don't know what happened, but the Bible says that when the apostle lay hands on people to receive the Holy Spirit, Simon was there and he desired that. He wanted this gift. He wanted this power. He said, hey, maybe you guys, by the look of things, you don't got a lot of money. I got some. I've been working for years. I mean, I've been doing things. <laughs> I've been a miracle worker for years, and people have given me money. I have it. I don't know if I want to leave that, but I have an offer. Give you money, give me the power. The exchange. Money and power. Money and power. He didn't know who he's messing with. To give me this power. 
Is he aware of what happened in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, Acts 3, that the Lord poured his spirit upon the disciples? None of these people ever asked <laughs> the power through money. They didn't receive it because they had money. You cannot buy the gift of, of God through money. The sad part about it is many people today, they think they can buy the gift of God through giving this man money. I mean, we are not coming and say, hey, I want to lay hands on people and see things happening, so get this money. In terms of what we are doing today, we are giving our money so that this miracle will happen to us. You think God will like that? No, no, no. His gift has been given freely. Why do you want to buy it? You know the reason why we want to buy it? So that we'll have a bigger reputation and a big name for ourselves. This man is simply preaching about Jesus. God is doing miracles, and that's it. And this man wants to buy. And, you know, the apostle is not trying to say, hey, he, he said, I know you're wicked, but he's also telling him to repent of this wickedness. And this is what he says to him in verses 23. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. I see. You, 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 you're not able to see that if you're not spiritually minded. If you're not walking with the Lord, you're not able to see that. You say, I see. And this is what I want us to talk about the rest of these minutes. Bitterness. Or the Lord taking us from bitterness to betterness. What are some of the causes that you know that would bring bitterness in your life? Many people, even the majority in our local congregations, harbor bitterness. We have things we are holding in our, in our hearts. Things that were done to us many, many years. We were offended a long time ago. We still have those things with us to date. A few characters we are going to see in the Bible. Number one is the same Simon we are talking about. And this is envy and jealousy about what others have that you don't have. You see people with things, and you begin to harbor envy. I mean, this is, the, the, the origin of this is what Christ promised them. You will receive power after which the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power to be witnesses. And this Simon guy, is getting mad because he doesn't have it. Peter was able to look into his situation and he says, I see it. I see it. I see that you are poisoned. Wow. Meaning bitterness and anger. They are able to poison us. They are able to kill us. Envy and jealousy about what others have and you don't. 
You see your neighbors, you know, walking day and night. They, they buy nice things for themselves. In terms of you're envying them. They just bought a house instead of rejoicing and, you know, being happy for them. You're talking bad about them. <laughs> That's when you want to behave very spiritual, like these things of the earth, they will, they will perish. <laughs> these houses and vehicles and things, they will perish. We know they will perish. We still need them. <laughs> but we, we are not able to live like animals outside. We are not, that is not meant for us. We need houses, we need vehicles, we need properties, we need things in this life, friends, right? If you don't need them and you have them, bring them to us, we can use them. We know how to use them. Don't envy people. When the Lord has blessed people, rejoice with them. The number two is disappointments of life. Have you ever been disappointed one time? Maybe so many times. Here in 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verses 10. You say, and this is Hannah. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but I will give your maidservant a male child and I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor shall come upon his head. He will be a Nazarite. He's in, she's in pain. She's also making a request to the Lord. Have you ever been disappointed? I believe, yeah. Many of us. We've been disappointed. A lot of expectations we have on the people we work with and especially our spouses. We have a lot of expectation. And I would advise us to lower our expectations of people because they are people. People fail every time. People are just people. You have very high expectation, and then when they are not met, we feel very disappointed. I'm disappointed because I thought they were this, I thought they would do this, I thought this, I thought this. Lower them. You know when you lower them, you'll be able to accept people for who they are, and you'll bless them. We're just humans. We don't know a lot of things. disappointment of life. And also we have a man here in Genesis chapter 27. Twenty-seven, thirty-four. And that would talk about betrayal and rejection by other people. When Esau had the words of his father, when his father was blessing his brother, he cried with exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me also, O oh my Father. There was bitterness in him. 
you know, they, he sold his birthright with what? With food. This, this story is actually very hilarious. That they're twins, and one of them is very hairy, very, like an animal. <laughs> the other one, the skin is smooth. And through, I don't know whether we call it deception or whatever it was, <laughs> but the mother told him, like, hey, you want to win, this is what you're going to do. Slaughter an animal and, you know, cover your hands with the skin of the animal, your hands and your neck, because those are the places he's going to touch. This man never realized that that was an animal. Like the, the senses the, of touch, they all disappeared with all age. Like, is that my son, Jacob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you miss that? That's, that's funny. Not supposed to be funny, though. But he cried. With all bitterness, with anger, rage, say, bless me also. You know what he felt? He felt betrayed by his own brother and also rejected by his own father. That he did not receive these blessings. Betrayal and rejection from others. It's a very hard situation. There's another man also. It's called Job. Job, we know, there was a conversation. God was conversing with the devil, as the Bible tells us. Satan told God that this man is only worshipping you because you have blessed him with wealth, with a lot of things. And God says, no, you have the permission to go destroy all these things, but don't touch his soul. He did exactly that. Exactly that. I mean, what would you do Knowing that God is conversing with the enemy concerning your life. What are you going to do? You tell God you're not serious. <laughs> this can't be. You, you, you can't have that conversation. I mean, I've, I've worked hard for this. I've I had this and, you know... In fact, I've, I'm helping people. I have a lot of employees. I have all these things. Are you not mindful of that? This is what Job says in Job chapter 7, verses 11. Therefore, I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. In the bitterness of my soul. That is, in hardship and misery, we see a lot of bitterness. Hardship and misery. When they come upon you, you think you're just going to be cool, calm, and collected. I'm always cool. In the middle of all trouble, no problema. No, you'll be troubled. You complain. You say things. And sometimes you say things that you ought not to say because of bitterness. It is poisonous. That is what Peter told this man. Bitterness has poisoned you. So we see betrayal and rejection by other people, and we also see hardship and miseries 
of life, they bring bitterness. Number five, we also see personal loss of loved ones would cause bitterness. Where do we see that? In the life of Ruth and Naomi, as they are conversing, we remember the story that Naomi lost everything, lost the husband, lost the sons, the country was, you know, there was nothing good for, for her there, she went away. And even when, you know, they're trying to call her Naomi, she say, no, don't call her that because the Almighty has afflicted me with bitterness. In Ruth uh, chapter 1 verses 20, I've been afflicted with bitterness. And lastly, we'll see also personal failures. Have you ever failed? Oh yeah, like daily. <laughs> personal failures. And apparently we are going to learn that from this man called Peter, the apostle. <laughs> you remember when the Lord spoke here in Luke, Luke 22, verses 61 and 62, the Bible says, And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. He went out and wept bitterly, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He remembering how he did fail him. He made a promise that he was not able to keep up with. I mean, how many of us, you know, we've, we've made promises to people, right? I will be with you. I will protect you. I will do this. I will do this. You will never lack food. You will never lack airtime. You, you, <laughs> you will never lack, you know. I will take you to the moon. I will take you places. I will take you to Hawaii. <laughs> Maybe some of us have fulfilled that. Hawaii up there. We've made promises, but we don't keep up with them. And in turn, you know, when we are reminded of them, there is rage, there is bitterness that comes with it. And I suppose when this one comes, maybe you just take it to the Lord. Tell God I'm bitter because of this situation. You know, this wise man called the preacher man, Solomon says, be, do not be hasty making vows in the house of the Lord. For if you don't fulfill them, they become a trap and a snare. They become sin, and sin yields death. Don't allow these things to, to, to come upon you so heavily, you know. A means of, you know, discussing these great things that are happening, miracles, and people are getting born again, and we see a man who is bitter right in the middle of this study. And I thought maybe we, we might have things and say, well, you know, Simon was a sorcerer and all these things. He represents the vast majority of us in church today. 
that we are envious and we have jealousy about what other people have and we don't have. We are so jealousy that our friends are getting married, all of them, while you're still singular. No, no one is coming your way. You're like, Lord, I pray that you send people my way. Am I sending them back or what is happening? You don't know what is happening. And when people are rejoicing and they're getting married and things are happening in their lives, you're like, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to show it, but there is bitterness in your inside. You'll be disappointed with life. The people you thought are with you, they've disappointed you, and in turn, you become a very bitter person. You've been betrayed. You've been rejected, and the hardships and the miseries of life have come upon you. You have lost things. You have lost people. You personally failed, or you have failed people, or people have failed you, and these things are just in you. And Peter is saying to him, for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness. Friends, this is not something that is far away from us. Even with us today, I know that a lot of people are struggling with bitterness. We don't want to let things go. We don't want to forgive people. In fact, we want to equalize things. We want people to feel it like we are feeling it. We want to destroy people's lives because we were offended. It is very hard dealing with the person who has been offended. Breaking through so hard. Oh, I was in this church, I was offended. So any time you see the ministers of the gospel, the way you look at them, never the same. Because you were offended before. I mean, did I offend you? No. I'm only reading the word of God. If it offends you, I'm glad. <laughs> but don't carry these things in your heart. I mean, I, I, I'm about... 83, 84 kgs. You want to carry me in your heart? <laughs> That's not fun. That's a lot of weight. And I'm one person. Imagine that. that every other person you're carrying in your heart, all the, these kgs you're carrying in your heart, it's going to weigh you down. It's going to tear you down. You're going to die too soon. Don't allow these things to be harbored in your heart. What are we supposed to do then? Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Say, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ, God in Christ forgave you. That is the solution. You got to put off something and you got to put on something. Put it off. Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. Put it away from you. And do you know how you put it away? By putting on kindness. <laughs> By putting on tender-heartedness. By forgiving other people, even as Christ forgave you.
If you have been forgiven, you will forgive. Because you know how it works and how it goes. You were burdened before, and now you have freedom. What do you want to do with that freedom? You know. You know what you ought to do in line with this? Trust in the sovereignty of God in this matters, that he will help you forgive. You, you're asking, but how? How will it work? Trust in the sovereignty of God. He's sovereign. He's all-knowing. He knows your heart. He knows that you've been offended. He knows that you have offended people. He knows that, for, in fact, when you're forgiving, it is good for you. It is healthy for you when you forgive. And number two also, extend God's grace to people. Be gracious to people. When they have offended you, when they have wronged you, they've done so many things, what are you going to do? Be gracious. Because he is gracious to us. Don't die with the offense. And then lastly, demonstrate love in a more practical way. More practical way. Don't just say it. Do things that will inform us that you really love. How did Christ demonstrate his love? By going to the cross. Sacrificing his life for us. The people who never deserved it, but he went to the cross for us. Friends, this is one thing that has messed up people's lives. Bitterness. But you can cross over to be better. You see what he actually said to this man? You pray. Repent, therefore, of all your wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me, that none of the things which you have spoken may come to pass. Pray to God for me. Maybe he was honest also. Hearing the magnitude of these things that he thought. He thought he would buy the gift of God with money. He thought he would arm twist them to get whatever he wants. I mean, give him a benefit of doubt. He's just a new believer. He doesn't know many things. All he knows is how to do miracles by his sorcery, but he wants to continue doing it. He wants to buy it. It doesn't work like that. We cannot buy the gift of God. It is given freely. And he said, pray to God that perhaps he'll forgive me. He'll cleanse me from my thoughts, from this evil desire. And that is what I want us to do, to pray to God this morning, that if there is any one of us struggling with bitterness, unforgiveness, anger, ill motives towards other people, that the Lord will forgive you. He forgives everyone who wants forgiveness. If you ask for it, he'll give it. The worship team will welcome back.
if we search deep within ourselves, we'll find something that we are bitter about. We'll find something that causes us sleepless nights. And though you see those people, you pretend that things are well, but you know that they're not well. trying to cover up things, you cannot do that for a long time. You're hurting yourself. You're killing yourself. And God's forgiveness is available for everyone. The great, small, everyone, it doesn't matter. His forgiveness is present here with us. As we bow our heads in prayer, maybe you're here and that is your struggle. Maybe you're saying, I have prayed for this issue for a long time. It doesn't seem to go. Anger issues, outburst of wrath. The Lord's forgiveness is here with us. Maybe you're here and that's you. I want to pray with you that the Lord will be gracious. I want to pray with you that the Lord will give you a new beginning. I want to pray with you as you close your eyes and you're there, you say, that's me. Lift up your hands, we'll pray with you. Thank you for those hands that are up. God, we thank you. We thank you for you know our hearts. You know our beginnings. You know our end. Even before our thought processes, you know us. And many things are come upon us struggling with a lot of things I pray oh God for these ladies and gentlemen raising their hands the Lord whatever it is I pray that you will lift it off their hearts that you forgive them that you give them a new beginning that you give them freedom, that you walk in their hearts. I pray, oh God, that any vile of the enemy will not have its place in their lives. They are your children, Lord. I pray that you will open their eyes to see how destructive these things can be. And I pray, oh God, that you will walk in their hearts. They are holding someone, I pray that they will let them go. Whatever brought it about, Lord, I don't know, but you know that there is forgiveness. I pray that they will forgive. I pray that we will forgive. You have forgiven us. I pray that you give us the strength to extend it to our brothers and sisters. I pray that we will be kind to our brothers and sisters. I pray that we will be tender-hearted towards them. I pray that we will forgive them. And whether they are far away from us and, or they are here, I pray that supernaturally you will work things out, God. Bring healings to these souls. Thank you, God, for doing it for them and for us. Whatever things we are struggling with, Lord, we bring them before you. 
pray that you help us cleanse us and as we give to you this morning our offerings we pray we'll give that which brings glory and honor to you we ask all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.